everyone. I am Lindsay Joseph, the Lynx Program Officer, and I'd like to welcome you all to the Lynx webinar. Lynx is a growing online community and resource sharing platform for people working to improve cardiovascular health around the world. Lynx was developed in collaboration between Resolve to Save Lives, the World Health Organization, and the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Before we begin, I'd like to review a few housekeeping rules. The lecture will be around 30 minutes long, followed by a Q&A session. We encourage participants to use the Q&A button located at the bottom of your screen. During the presentation, participants will be muted, but will have the option to type in questions for the Q&A portion of the webinar. Thanks to our colleagues at PAHO, we are offering simultaneous interpretation into Spanish. Both the English and Spanish webinars are being recorded and will be posted to the Lynx website after the session. Today's webinar is about online training resources for hypertension control programs. Globally, hypertension kills approximately 10 million people each year, more than all infectious diseases combined. Resolve to Save Lives works with global, national, and local partners to help establish and scale up proven strategies to improve control of high blood pressure. Through our partnerships, we are committed to the development and dissemination of educational resources to help improve hypertension screening, diagnosis, and management, particularly in resource-limited settings. Today's presenters are Dr. Kuni Matsushita, Associate Professor in the Department of Epidemiology at Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health, and Dr. Yeni Rodriguez, a cardiologist and consultant for academic programs on cardiovascular and renal diseases with the Pan American Health Organization. Dr. Matsushita will introduce a brand new online training course developed by Johns Hopkins, comprised of six modules geared toward helping program managers, implementers, and providers on the front line of hypertension control and program design, planning, and implementation. Dr. Rodriguez will review PAHO's virtual course on the implementation of the HEARTS technical package. The course is an educational tool designed for healthcare professionals and public health administrators consisting of 12 modules that approach the diagnosis and management of hypertension, diabetes, and dyslipidemia. I will now hand it over to Dr. Kuni Matsushita. Right. Um, thank you, Lindsay. Um, so good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, um, everyone. So I'm going to share my screen. Um, let me try. And hope everyone can see my slides. Lindsay, could you see my slide? Yeah. Okay, great. Right, um, so I would like to um, briefly uh, introduce uh, our new online course uh, named Fundamentals for Implementing a Hypertension Program in Resource Constrained Settings. And before that, I would like to give a little bit of background about what uh, Hopkins team uh, for Resolved Save Life has been uh, doing in terms of training materials. So first, we provided feedback uh, for training materials uh, created by Resolved Save Life or its partners like uh, C uh, CDC and other partners. And we also, we compiled a catalog of existing training materials. And now uh, that catalog is available in our website. We also created four short instructional videos for non-physician personnel because after uh, cataloging existing training materials, it became clear that most existing training materials are targeting primary care physicians, uh, but there are not so many materials for non-physician personnel. So these four videos, um, uh, kind of animation, uh, animated videos, then you can see some uh, screenshot on the right bottom corner. And each video is four minutes long, approximately. And uh, those videos covered why is hypertension important and preparation uh, of an individual for blood pressure measurement and how to diagnose hypertension. And the last one is what to do after a diagnosis of hypertension. 
and, and these videos are open uh, in YouTube. So once you receive the link, um, please uh, feel free to visit. And so far, 5,000 uh, viewers kind of visited our video. Um, and you can argue whether it's a lot or it's a small number, but fortunately we got some kind of uh, good for, uh, positive feedback. So for example, uh, from Thai folks, we received this uh, note that we have a request from Thai colleagues, Thai Stroke Society and Thai NCD Alliance to use a video with Thai subtitles. So we translated in Thai and we put uh, Thai caption in our YouTubes. Um, also, we received this comment. So I like so much your videos. Indeed, we want to translate the all four into Spanish. So now, uh, Hopkins team is uh, discussing with Paho how to make it happen. And then uh, we also received this uh, note that we identify videos on YouTube developed by your institution on the topic of hypertension, the content of which we find very appropriate for use with our Caribbean populations. Um, importantly, there are many training materials, but they have not been uh, extensively evaluated whether they actually improve our knowledge. So we conducted a pilot study in Tanzania using two of our four videos. Um, in, and then we conducted pre and post tests before and after watching our videos in 33 healthcare providers, including physicians and nurses. And after watching videos, actually their knowledge about the threshold of the uh, hypertension diagnosis has improved. And the recognition that most hypertensive patients do not have symptoms have also improved. And understanding about critical uh, factors for controlling blood pressure has also improved, as you can see in this table. Then uh, our team uh, was tasked uh, to create online course. And after discussing with uh, Resolved Save Life team, so we decided to create a course targeting program managers and implementers. So and we also have a few kind of key concepts in our mind when we uh, created this course. So we made our effort to have concise and easy descriptions. And instead of traditional lecture style uh, learning experience, we wanted to have interactive learning experiences. And we paid attention to bring some real world examples. And we wanted to have a um, description that is evidence-based. And to help um, people in the front line, we wanted to have some downloadable practical materials like checklists or job aids. And it's really hard to cover or meet everyone's um, kind of preference and need. So we, want, uh, we uh, set this section, dig deeper, for learners who would like to know more. So our online course has six modules, as Lindsay mentioned. The first one is Fundamentals of Hypertension. So this is kind of overview. And then the second module is uh, talking about basics of hypertension diagnosis and management. The third module covers clinic-based hypertension management. And fourth module uniquely um, features community-based hypertension management. And it became clear that um, Resolve Save Life um, kind of identified the issue of medication supply in some countries. So we featured medication supply in our fifth module. Then uh, sixth uh, module is um, more kind of um, operation of health related programs. So we feature um, planning, program evaluation, and communication in the last module. So I would like to acknowledge um, Resolve Save Life for sponsoring um, the creation of this online course. And we uh, constructed task force members listed here who worked hard for almost a year and 20 um, members from our team or some other institutions um, uh, created the content of six modules. And we had advisory group uh, from 
other partners like CDC, PAHO, etc., and they provided critical uh, variable uh, feedback. And we received some uh, editorial uh, support from the, the members listed here. So um, I'd like to um, spend maybe kind of five, 10 minutes to uh, talk about, uh, to go through some kind of key piece, uh, pieces of our uh, online course. So I will switch the screen from PowerPoint to the website. So hope you can still see. And if you cannot see, please uh, let Lindsay know. So, um, so as you can see, there are six modules and there is also some brief introduction of course overview. So if you click course overview, you can see some introduction um, about this course. And there in maybe you, and there's a few videos talking about um, our online course and also the president of International Society of uh, hypertension alta shoot also uh, provided a brief video about our online course then um, if you go to how to navigate this course um, you can um, there is some kind of key uh, basic instruction about how to navigate yourself with some kind of uh, clicking feature and some uh, menu button etc then um, so I'd like to go to some kind of real module. So I'd like to go from module one. So module one is fundamentals of hypertension. So if you don't have time, at least um, this module is kind of worth taking um, to get a general sense about how, why hypertension is important. So we are think, uh, starting with this question. What is a leading modifiable risk factor of death and disability in the world? Listing some uh, potential answers. And this is a little bit kind of trick question. The actual answer is hypertension as listed here. And then each module start with learning objectives. Okay. So for this module, for example, the first learning objective is to define hypertension. And you can see other objectives here. Um, then there are uh, some videos, um, short videos um, about why is hypertension important and we have a script here. Um, and then, um, so, and in terms of interactivity, so, so let me, so yeah. yeah. So for example, here we are talking, about, this section is about major complication of hypertension. So we are talking about why hypertension may damage arteries, and then why hypertension may cause heart failure, and why hypertension may cause some other um, complications. Okay. So um, our learners need, uh, would uh, need to click, so that will create some interactive um, experience. Um, and if we go to, um, hypertension control programs. Um, we are featuring uh, two success stories. Um, so this is a section of um, success stories. Um, so if one from United States, uh, from Kaiser Permanente. Um, so I would like to show brief videos. I'm a physician in the Permanente Medical Group, practicing in Kaiser Permanente, Northern California, where we initiated a hypertension program with a multifaceted approach. The program improved our patient's blood pressure control rate from 44% in 2001 to 90% in 2015. Yeah, so um, doc Dr. Mark Jaffe um, has agreed to, um, kind of to give us um, this short clip um, about his experience in Kaiser Permanente. And we also uh, featuring another success story from Argentina. So then, um, so each module will end with um, module takeaways. So to make sure the learning objectives are met. And then, uh, and also each module has uh, five quiz questions. So for example, for module one, um, and the order of uh, 
quiz will be randomly selected. So every time the learner will have a different order of questions. Okay. So, so hy hypertension can cause all of these uh, complications and when we submit, the answer is correct. Um, and there is one, um, so let me just go to a question that I would like to show you. Um, so again, it's, the order is random, so I cannot predict which one. Yeah, so this is the one that I wanted to share. So this question is asking much the challenge the healthcare providers face in diagnosing and managing hypertension to the approach for overcoming the challenge. So learners need to, so I'm just doing uh, for the sake of time randomly, but learner needs to uh, uh, kind of match the question and answer. So then submit, uh, obviously I fell because I was not reading, um, but everyone can read uh, carefully and try to match. So, um, so that's, um, and basically each module has uh, the same structure. So module two is again about hypertension diagnosis. And, and in module two, uh, Dr. Pedro Ordunes from PAHO uh, has pro provided a short uh, clip, uh, video clip. So I recommend visiting this module and also Dr. Uh, Prabhdeep from the India Hypertension uh, control initiative has provided a short video. So module three is clinic-based hypertension and module four is community-based hypertension and module five is medication supply and module six is about improving operational effectiveness in hypertension programs. So I think that's uh, all from uh, my uh, presentation and demonstration and I would be happy to answer any question uh, you may have. Thank you so much, Kuni. Uh, we will have questions at the end of both presentations. Um, I will now hand it over to uh, Dr. Rodriguez for her presentation. Hello. Hi, Annie. Hi, um, thank you for the invitation. So we are going to review the virtual course on the implementation of the HARS technical package in primary healthcare. Next, please. The objective of these presentations are to review the contents of the HEARTS virtual course, the value, benefits, and reach of the course. I will demonstrate how to navigate through the platform of the virtual campus for public health of PAHO and how to get into the virtual course uh, HEARTS. And I also will share our, our outreach strategies and how we promote the course in, uh, in countries. Next, please. And this slide is very important to understand uh, where the virtual course come from. So the Global Heart Initiative of the World Health Organization aims to improve practices in the control of cardiovascular diseases in the primary care level through the use of five technical packages. First, empower for tobacco control. Second, check for the reduction of salt consumption. Uh, third, replace for the elimination of trans fat Fourth, active for reduce the level of physical inactivity. And fifth, hearts for the clinical management of hypertension, diabetes, and dyslipidemia. Next, please. These are the five modules and the implementation guide of the HEARTS technical package, and all of them are described in the virtual course. Next. The course is intended for primary healthcare physicians, nurses, and another members of the primary healthcare team, including primary care um, managers. Also, we encourage faculty at public health programs to make this course available for their students. The professor of the course are experts in the field of public health and cardiology, management of public health programs, evaluations and implementation science who work in different settings, including diverse health system. Next, please. And now let's review the course content and the structure. So the course consists of 11 modules from module three to 11. Each one is composed of five parts and is shown in this slide. So the first part is the module introductions and main concepts. 
based on a presentation by a qualified speaker with experience in HARS initiative. The second part is the learning capsule consisting of short learning videos and other didactic material. Third, a short evaluation exercise or a clinical exercise. Fourth, uh, recommended reading, which include the most important reference that should be read to complement the, the learning process of the module. And the fifth part is the evaluation composed of five to 10 multiple choice questions. Next part, please. Well, the, this, this is the description of the, each module. So module zero is well convenience, and then module one um, is the course structure and content. And the learning capsule is the global burden of cardiovascular diseases and strategies for reduction of risk factors. The module two is the framework of the Global Heart Initiative. And we describe in the learning capsules, the technical packages, empower, check, replace, and active. The model three, as you can see on the right side of the slide, is the description of the uh, module itself, the heart module, healthy lifestyle counseling. And the learning capsules are smoking and smoking sensations and population solid reduction strategies. The module four is evidence-based treatment protocols you can see also in blue color on the right side. So every module, the main presentation describes the module itself the, of the technical package. And the learning capsule is um, fix those combinations and Kaiser Permanent Experience in California, diabetes in secondary prevention in primary healthcare level. Then module five is access to essential medicine and technology. And we describe the strategic fund and the core set of medications in the learning capsule. Next, please. Module six is still in the building process. Um, the, the learning capsule, which is the main evidence of the HOP study, is already open. And the main um, presentation will be open very soon. The same thing with the technical package that is not yet available. The module seven is team-based care. You can see it on the right side of the slide in color is orange. And the learning capsules are the importance of the role of primary healthcare teams. And also we describe a control study, a hypertension control study with community health workers in Argentina. Module eight is the system for monitoring. And we describe data collection and reporting tools and hearts and PAHO, a world hypertension leak indicators related to hypertension control programs. The module nine and 10 are implementations. The main difference is that module nine is implementations in the macro level. And we describe the expansion strategies of the HARS initiative and the service delivery model in the learning capsules. And then module 10 in learning capsule, we describe ethical issues in implementation and research and also the million hard domestic experience. And finally, Module 11 is cost, and where we describe the price availability and affordability of hypertension medications. Next, please. Well, this course is available on the platform of the Virtual Campus for Public Health of PAHO, and it is accessible 24 hours, seven days throughout the year. It is totally free, and I would like to highlight the, the PAHO Virtual Campus it enjoys high credibility and it has millions of users. Um, we always get in touch with them through surveys and also we open a forum for questions and another exchange. So once you get into the platform, you have to select still learning courses. Next, please. And you will see these, uh, these images and you can select the language. The course is available in English and Spanish. So in this case, we, we selected English. And it is important that every participant open an account in the virtual campus in order to get access into the, into the course they want to take. So once you choose uh, the, virtual comp the virtual course of hearts, then you can go through the course from module one to module 11. That's what we suggest. However, you can go directly to the module you want to review. Next, please. So in this case, I chose module five, just to give you an example. And module five is access to essential medicine and technology. Next, please. 
The introduction of main concepts is given by an expert. In this case, it's Dr. Prashan Yada from Harvard Medical School. And once you finish the main presentation, you have to go to the learning capsule. You cannot go to the next sessions without seeing the first part. So the next part is a learning capsule. Next, please. And then in the next, and in this presentation, you'll see the learning capsules are three short presentations that complement the main presentation of the module. So we have a strategic fund, the importance of using validate blood pressure devices in the heart programs, and the third learning capsule is essential medicines. Once you see all these three learning capsules, then you can go to the third part of the, of the module, which is the clinical exercise. Next, please. And this is the short evaluation exercise. And we ask the students to organize this diagram step by step using the small boxes on the left side. The students have the chance to to complete this uh, three times, and it's, if they fail all attempts, the system will give them the answer. But it doesn't apply for the evaluation, of course. <laughs> Next, please. Okay, so this is the answer of this, of this exercise. And this is how the exercise will look like at the end. And you can see on the, on the right side, on the, on the bottom part of the presentations, that this correspond to module five, access to essential medicine and technologies. And you see the images, image of the technical package itself. Next, please. Then in the recommended reading, we, as we, I explained before, we add the literature that we believe is very important to complement the module. We also add the PDF of the presentation so students or any participant who would like to print them can have access to them. Next, please. And this is the evaluations composed in module five. In this case, have six questions, multiple choice questions, and the student can try the, I mean, they can try five times, but they can try more if they want to have a higher score. And it's important to pass all the evaluations with more than 17% in order to get the certificate. And I will, I will talk about the certificate in, in the next slide. Next, please. Well, there are two types of certificate. Type A is for clinical personnel at the level of primary health care, and type B is for managers and health administrators also in primary healthcare settings. So we see the mark that are the modules that must be taken in order to receive every, um, any type of certificate. However, participants usually take all the modules and get both certificates. Next, please. And this is our numbers. This is uh, the participant enrollment data in the course by February 16. And we now have more than 40,000 students enrolled in the countries that are implementing HEARTS for a total of 42,000 uh, participants, including other countries. And we have 32,215 participants with certificates. Next, please. And I think this is very important to understand why we can outreach many people and we have a lot of participants, mostly students, nurses, and um, primary health care doctors. So we uh, promote the course among a specific priority audience, which are the HEARTS initiative coordinating teams in all countries and in all centers that are implementing HEARTS, primary care teams member from all HEARTS implementing countries, universities, their faculty, under and postgraduate students. Um, also, we share with HEARTS partners in each of the countries, mostly with scientific society. And we have like, a great receptivity from all of them. Next, please. Well, thank you for your time and welcome to the course. Thank you, Dr. Rodriguez, and thank you, um, Dr. Matsushita, for those excellent presentations. We are now going to open up for the Q&A session. Um, as a reminder, we ask you to use the Q&A button located at the bottom of your screen uh, to type in questions. Um, I see there are a few questions already, so we'll get started. Um, for 
Cooney, is the Tanzania pilot study published? Yes, uh, it's published in PLUS One. Um, and the, Lindsay, are you, are you going to share the slides with all participants, correct? Yes, so yeah. the slides and uh, links to the modules will, to both training courses will be posted to the LINCS website. Yeah, and in the slide, uh, sorry that I did not uh, clarify, but there is a citation below the table. Okay. Um, and uh, the next question is, what is the average estimated time to finish all modules? Um, for our course, uh, we uh, kind of piloted and uh, usually each module uh, takes between 30 minutes to 60 minutes, depending on the probably um, the familiarity to kind of um, language and content. Um, and then uh, whether they uh, visit the dig deeper section or not. But we wanted to uh, have a short a module that can be taken within an hour. So overall six modules should take maybe five to six hours on average. Great, and, and Yeni, maybe for the PAHO course, do you know the estimate amount of time for each module? Um, it is variable. Some modules can get more like a 40 minutes, some other will require at least Nine, 90 minutes, oh, yeah, one hour, an hour and a half. Great, thank you. Um, the next question that we have, can these courses be taken on a mobile device, um, especially for low and middle income countries, which may not have access to laptops? Uh, yes, uh, the platform of the virtual campus, they have, uh, at, they, they are also creating an app, but yes, you can watch the the course through the mob and on the mobiles and any devices. And as I say before, we also offer the options to download the PDF in case the students can know login or get into any website so they can read the presentations whenever they need it. And for Hopkins um, site, um, I think that's a critical issue. So we are aware about the limited availability of uh, laptop. Um, so uh, our course is designed uh, to be accessible from any devices, including cell phone, iPad, and laptop or desk desktop. Great, thank you. Um... Uh, Cooney, could you uh, speak a little bit to the um, sodium courses that are also in development? Yep, uh, so we are working on the second uh, online course uh, targeting, uh, kind of focusing on global sodium reduction. And there will be kind of eight, nine modules, and uh, most of modules are featuring kind of one approach of sodium reduction like kind of um, food labeling and etc. Um, so I cannot give exact date, but um, maybe in spring or early summer, uh, we should be able to launch that course as well. Great. Yeah, and I, um, and I think I probably did not specify, but uh, our online course is um, also kind of freely available and, and we, uh, omit the login function. So everyone can start from anywhere and can come back anytime and can, um, can move forward at uh, his or her own pace. Great. Um, I know uh, Yeni mentioned that there are certificates available for the PAHUR courses. Or is there any sort of certification or credit received from completing the Hopkins training course? Um, thanks for that important question. Um, so we are now working on um, the system to uh, provide that option. Um, probably it will be available in uh, one or two months. That's kind of my hope. Uh, uh, collaborating with a platform named Coursera. 
So then I think uh, there are two entries. So our online course material in our website will be completely open to public. And then those who are interested in getting certification can uh, access our online course through Coursera. And then um, they will get certificate. And we are going to have um, additional uh, qu quiz questions specifically for Coursera. That's our plan. And now we are working on uh, that arrangement. Um, some, sorry, someone has asked uh, whether or not um, the Coursera course would uh, incur a small fee. That's right. Um, however, um, Coursera provides um, some, um, how do you call, um, some um, system of um, scholarship for uh, those who are uh, taking Coursera course from low middle income countries. Um, so that's my understanding. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, just a reminder, the courses, uh, links to the courses will be posted to uh, the links website after, um, after the session. Uh, another question in the chat, uh, are there opportunities to provide feedback after trying out the course? Um, for, so this is Cooney from Hopkins. So from our site, e, uh, there is a short survey. Um, I believe it was, um, it includes five questions. Um, so uh, yeah, we welcome your feedback. So our online course is two days old. So we just launched it on Monday. So um, if you can provide feedback, we would greatly appreciate. Um, for PAHO, we have the community forum that a student can ask any kind of questions they, they have. And also when they are going to get the certificate, they are obligated to also complete a survey which is a quality control survey and they also can explain um, if they would like to um, improve the, what what part of the course they will think will need some improvement or what part of the course they think um, we may emphasize the thema or so on Great, thank you. We have time for more questions from the audience if people want to type them into the Q&A section. Um, there have been some questions about trans fat in the chat um, for either Cooney or Yeni. Are there any plans to make a trans fat training course? Yeah, Pahal is working on a new virtual course as, um, for the technical package replace for the elimination of trans fat. Um, also, this course will be free and it will be available in the platform of the Virtual Campus for Public Health of PAHO. So, so um, for Hopkins uh, side, um, Hopkins team for Resolved Save Life uh, is in, 
involved in only for sodium reduction and hypertension control, but not trans fat. So as of today, there is no plan to develop online course for trans fat elimination. Uh, one of our attendees would like to know if these courses have been used with pharmacists. So, um, so this is Kuni from Hopkins side. So our target audience is program managers and implementers. So we assume the situation that the medical background may be limited. So um, our course would be definitely uh, inter interpretable and understandable and uh, useful for pharmacists as well, especially module five, focusing on medication supply can be helpful. And I see some question about uh, people without medical background. So we pay attention about uh, easy description. So I, I hope that uh, our online course can be quite helpful for those with a limited medical background as well. But if that's not the case, please, um, give us feedback. Yeah, this is Jenny from PAHO. And yeah, our course has been using for pharma pharmacies. Um, just look at the data, we have 442 participants who are pharmacists. Another question from um, the Q&A. Uh, has there been good response from professional societies? So um, this is um, Kuni from Hopkins. Um, uh, fortunately, yes. Um, so for example, um, International Society of Hypertension is endorsing our course and in the course overview section, uh, the president of ISH, um, Dr. Alta Schutt, uh, gave us uh, a short um, video clip um, encouraging uh, kind of learners to take uh, our course. And also um, in the advisory group, we had um, several partners, including CDC, PAHO, World Hypertension League. So our course, um, has been receiving um, positive feedback, fortunately, as of today. Yeah, um, Hearts has been placed in many websites of PAHO um, scientific societies, including Inter-American Cardiology Society. And I think this is also a very valuable way to reach people and to get involved into the course. Uh, especially in Spanish community um, speakers, but also in the Caribbean. Um, the, the course has been placed in another um, scientific society, which made the course um, a great value for primary healthcare teams. And this includes all primary healthcare teams. So there is no fault there for the teams to use the course. We always encourage nurses, uh, physicians, pharmacies, nutritionists to use the course, as well as public health manager. Uh, Yanni, we've had a question about um, the usefulness if you are taking the PAHO course, but you are not in a PAHO country. Uh, maybe you can speak to to that. Yeah, anyone can take the course as soon as they get, they can log in on the platform of the Virtual Campus for Public Health. So participant doesn't need to be from a hard implementer country, or it doesn't need to be 
uh, Paho country. Anyone can take it. We have a student from everywhere in the world. We have a student from Tanzania, from Sierra Leone, and from many uh, small cities in Africa, Asia, in also, we have people from um, a small island, which is very, very, very impressive. We still have time for a few more questions if anyone has any additional things they'd like to ask. Okay, well, um, thanks again to our presenters, Dr. Kuni Matsushita and Dr. Yeni Rodriguez. Um, this information was very helpful. And again, the links to access both courses will be posted to the links website after the session. Um, and a special thanks to our colleagues at PAHO for offering the simultaneous interpretation into Spanish. Uh, both webinars recordings will be posted to the website as well. Um, in case you didn't see our links communication um, recently, we've updated the links toolkit. Uh, we encourage you all to take a look and also provide us feedback if there are things you um, would like to change. We have a content submission form. Um, you can share resources that you've developed or other materials that you think would be helpful to add to the toolkit. You can send um, any questions to support at linkscommunity.org um, and the content submission form can be found on the homepage of the links toolkit. Uh, thanks again to all our presenters and I hope everyone has a fabulous day. Thanks for having me and thanks for great questions. Thanks to you.